I know I'm not alone in these thoughts. I'm just the one jumping out the window. 2017 was a big year for Daniel Caesar, and 2018 is shaping up to be pretty good too. Last August, he released his debut album, Freudian, which went to number 11 on the Billboard Hot R&B charts. It garnered acclaim from the likes of Barack Obama and Stevie Wonder. Daniel Caesar, in many ways, represents the future of Canadian music, and he's doing it on his own terms. Take a look. Daniel Caesar, or Ashton Simmons as he was born, the son of a gospel singer. He grew up in Oshawa, Ontario, in a strictly religious household, singing in church choirs throughout his childhood. After he got expelled from school, Daniel left home at 17, made his way to Toronto, where he hooked up with a team that included frequent Drake producers Jordan Evans and Matthew Burnett. You are the reason. In 2014, he released the EP Praise Break, seven tracks of spear instrumentals, gospel harmonies, but lyrics about love, sex, and breaking away. His work earned him worldwide attention, sold out shows, interest from a lot of major labels. But Daniel made the bold choice to stay independent. And it turns out, betting on himself paid off. None of that could ever make me leave. The breakout single from his album Freudian, Get You, boasts more than 75 million streams on Spotify and 22 million views on YouTube. Send me kisses when there's great skies. Daniel was also nominated for two Grammys this year, as well as Artist of the Year and R&B Soul Recording of the Year at the Junos. It's been a breakneck rise to success, but as you'll see, Daniel Caesar knows how important it is to stay true to himself. What's the driving vision behind Freudian? What's the concept? Freudian, it's, that one was um, just introspective. When I, set, when I set out to write it, just like I was going through a, like a lot of personal stuff and like my life was, was all over the place and kind of just to bring clarity and to get myself out of that slump, I just kind of like bore my soul. So what's it like when these incredibly personal thoughts you have, stuff that only like Dan Daniel Caesar knows, when people in an audience are also feeling those things and they, and they relate to them? Oh yeah, it's because it's, it, we all go through them and that's, the, that's what makes it a little bit easier. I know everybody, I know I'm not alone in these thoughts, I'm just the one jumping out the window, you know? But I, I don't believe for a second that I'm the only one that goes through this. That has to be why this is all working so well. All this music, like everything we're doing, like it's working extremely well. And the only way I can justify that in my mind is because of how honest I am and how it connects. And that could, it could be something completely different. But in my mind, when I think about all the recent successes in my life, I believe that's why. I was hearing stories about you having opportunities to sign to pretty big major labels, opportunities that musicians kind of dream of, and, and you and your team understanding, knowing so much of yourselves that you knew that wasn't the way to go. Is, is that it? Yes. I think at a certain point, we kind of realized that we'd stumbled onto something special. And, you know, as time goes on and more doors open up, and people kind of let you know, like, hey, like, you're doing something that we haven't seen anyone else do, you know? We had a meeting at um, Rock Nation, I think it was, and we had we were with the in the meeting, and Ty Ty was in there, which is one of uh, Jay Z's right hand. You know, he said what we're doing reminds him of, of what they were doing at the time, and it was literally like in that moment where a flip switched, and it was like, oh, there's like, how could we possibly give this away to somebody else at this point? You know, it's like the goats are telling us that we're like headed in the right direction. You know, the OGs. So, yeah, I think we, we just, we know ourselves, we know what we're capable of, what we're good at. I know what I'm good at, and I definitely know what I'm not good at. And we kind of just set things up and push it as far as we can. And then when you, you hit the wall, that's when you, we sit down, we regroup, and we bring in someone that can take us further. I just want to thank you for all your revival. What do awards mean to you? Everything and nothing. It's, I don't, 
I don't know I've never won an award. That was like that's why I re I really care about this. Oh, and you you've never you've never won an award. Never, never, not even in attendance. Uh, how about the Junos? What does it mean to be recognized by the Canadian music industry? It's like it's it's incredible, man. I'm I'm Canadian. It's interesting to look at the history of the Junos and the way, especially with the way the Junos have kind of treated R and B in the past. Twenty years ago, the right remember the Rascals? They turned down Rap Recording of the Year in protest, saying there wasn't enough representation of Black music in the TV awards ceremony. And that, so that was 1998. Yeah, I mean, do you feel that things have gotten better since 1998? Another, I, I should, I should, I should say right now that I. I'm excited about these awards. I've never really followed them. I never, I didn't have a TV growing up. Like I've never watched the Juno, Juno Awards on television. So honestly, I don't feel like I'm qualified to comment. But it's from a, an ignorant outsider's perspective. I Definitely not an outsider, but go on, that's fine. We, You're definitely not ignorant, <laughs> but go on, that's fine. I, I'm, I believe that there could be more representation, I do. But I'm, I'm happy that, you know, I hope to lead the be the leader of the new school as far as inclusivity. I read this article on Vulture about you the other day, and it was largely about how you bring back traditional R&B sensibilities to the mainstream. So more acoustic instruments. Do you agree with any of these perceptions of the music that you're making? Uh, yeah. I, th I think that's kind of what we try to do. We, no one's putting out anything that hasn't been done before. It's kind of just a matter of to call it like Frankenstein, you know? Just creating something with pieces from everything that you like, everything that you've ever heard in but your life that... But it's decidedly chill, right? Your music is. Yeah, that's because I like to think that I am. I'm yeah. chill. Can you see yourself ever making a bit more of an up-tempo kind of club tune? I don't want to say no to anything ever, but I doubt it. You don't love me that's just not my speed. I'm a very low energy person. I sleep a lot. I um, <laughs> honestly, man, like I just I like music that makes me feel stuff, you know, but not like that stuff. If you could talk to yourself a year ago, before Freudian came out, before it all kind of exploded, what would you what would you say to yourself? I would say stay off social media. Say so after you put off the project, just chill on social media. What do you mean? Tell me why. You gotta tell me why. Because you can't help. It's like you're bombarded with comments, good or bad. And there's so many good. The good reactions outweigh the bad ones extremely. But that's good or bad. Like I don't need people to. You don't need to have people tell you how great you are. Like every five minutes, like your phone's like, hey, don't forget you're great. Hey, don't yeah. forget. Yeah, it's like it's dangerous. How's it gonna feel when you get there? How's it gonna feel when you get to Vancouver and and it's 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 time you're there? Special man, just like I was. Yeah, this running. Anytime it's a moment like that, you know, I always look at Jordan like, yo, remember? In those moments, when you get to just like quickly run the tape back in your head, like we went through this, we went through this. We went through that, man. I remember that day, I didn't think I was gonna make it. I remember that day, I thought, you know, like... And then you get to really appreciate where you are. I know that when I'm on my deathbed, all the money I've made isn't gonna matter. I'm very psyched on it right now, but one day all it's gonna matter is that I had these moments, you know, with my friends and we did these things, and that's gonna be the currency eventually. It's quite remarkable, and I know a lot of people who, when they talk about how there's a different chapter in Canadian music being written, your name is one of the first that comes to mind, and I think that's going to be on our minds of the Junos this year. How's that feel? It's fresh. I've got to flip my ears, man. <laughs> fresh and <to> rough. <laughs>